City Council business session for Thursday, January 31, 2013 is now in order. Uh, first order of, I believe we have a quorum. Yeah, we do. First order of business is approval of the minutes for the business session of January 24, 2013. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the minutes of January 24, 2013 be approved. Is there any discussion? If there's no discussion, we'll... Um, is this a voice vote or a roll call? Voice vote. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. There are no opposed. Minutes are approved. Second order of business, Councilman Ford. Uh, citywide business survey presentation and update of the KC Best Initiatives. Do uh, you want to take it from there? I will. Uh, we have Pete Fullerton from the uh, uh, KC EDC, and I think Gary Sage is with us also. We're going to have Tom start us off. Tom, you want to come up to the... Table. You don't, you don't want me we'll give you a seat at the table. <laughs> anyway, good afternoon. 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 Uh, we are approaching our second year, uh, so we've I think made a lot of progress. Uh, as you all recall, this is a collaborative effort, Casey Best of the city, the EDC, the chamber. The Downtown Council, the Hispanic EDC, and we've added this year Platte and Clay County EDC. So we are continuing to try to expand the, the effort and bring in as many parties that have the same interest of working on business retention and to some extent business attraction for Kansas City, Missouri. What I wanted to do, uh, rather than give you a lot of remarks for me, we're going to go over the survey, but I, I wanted the opportunity just very quickly to have each of the KC Best staff people introduce themselves in the area they work in. Some of you may not know them. They may You may not realize that they work in your district. And so uh, if we could just start uh, in the back. Tom, why don't you have them come up to the microphone and introduce themselves? I'm Gary Sage uh, with the Economic Development Corporation. My specific area of focus is downtown, but I've got citywide responsibilities. Hi, I'm Jennifer Pressberry. I represent the area just north of Pershing um, to the railroad, south to 85th State Line to Prospect. Good afternoon. Steve Rennie with the EDC. I uh, represent mostly... Uh, the 6th District and a little bit of the 5th District in South Kansas City. I'm Matt Jarrett. Um, I am responsible for Kansas City north of the river, so I spend all my time in Platte and Clay Counties. Hello, I'm Jeremy Davis, a development officer representing the downtown loop and some areas to the east of downtown, so the 4th and 3rd District. My name is Drew Solomon. I represent the uh, Crossroads area, River Market, West Bottoms, 18th and Vine, uh, pretty much the halo surrounding the Central Business District. Hi, David McCubrey, uh, south of the river, uh, all the way down to, uh, from Prospect going east, all the way down to about 75th Street. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, I, I you know, if, if you if you need some help in your district or anything, please, uh, you know, contact these people. They're doing a great job for the city, for the EDC, uh, in dealing with companies, and uh, uh, we hope to continue that and certainly thank the city for their financial support of this undertaking along with uh, our, our primary benefactor, which has been Kansas City Power and Light, and uh, to some extent also Hallmark Cards. With that, I'm going to turn it over, and uh, we've got just a couple of quick presentations by different people, and then we're going to get in the survey. Okay. Well, are you survey? Yeah, I'm survey. Uh, <coughs> is Chris Lee, did she get here? She's not. She not. You know, we'll do that later. Bill, you want to say a few words on behalf of the UPC? Sure. Good afternoon, Bill Dietrich, President of the Downtown Council. We've been engaged in business retention and attraction, gosh, going on 10 years now for in Kansas City, Missouri, predominantly River to 31st Street, State Line Road, or 18th and Vine. And uh, when this initiative 
uh, uh, took off at the EDC, uh, it was a, a major enhancement of our efforts. It, it, it definitely broadened the reach. It brought new resources to the table, um, a broader commitment from the, the city and the Economic Development Corporation. Um, we are now uh, uh, partnering on a number of major initiatives. In fact, this evening we have a business recognition event down at uh, the Roastery, if anyone's available. We'll be honoring five companies who have increased their investment in downtown, uh, greater downtown, uh, and remain in Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, those are important to do, those kind of events, because it really tells people, we want you here, you're important. If you have issues and, and uh, uh, challenges, let us help you solve them. And uh, with Pete and his team and Tom, their leadership, uh, we've been able to bring a lot more to the table to help businesses citywide, as you can see from the EDC staff, resolve their issues. So we stand 150% behind this initiative. Uh, it's been one of the best things we've done in the last several years uh, to communicate with Kansas City, Missouri businesses that uh, you're, really, you're very important. Uh, we need you here. We want you here. Let us help you uh, grow your business. Um, if, if I could. I think that we've made an assumption that may not be true for everyone, and the assumption may be that everybody who is here or listening or watching this on television has some idea of what the KC Best program is. I think that we ought to have at least a little bit of an explanation of what it is so that people can put things in context, if that's okay. We, most of us know, but people watching this on TV may have no idea whatsoever. Uh, Casey Best is the uh, business expansion support team, uh, an enhanced effort to uh, get out and uh, create better relationships with our existing uh, business community. Um, on a number of different tiers of, of that, we, we, also, we go out and do one-on-one -on -one business calls. As Bill says, there's also an appreciation events that I think are very important. What we'll go over here in a few moments with regards to the survey is important because it's really a listening post that we do to try to flesh out issues, business development issues, before they become <coughs> problems and be able to address those. Uh, we've had great collaboration uh, with a number of uh, folks, including our uh, folks at BizCare, with the city. So we know we have some enhanced communications that we've actually put in place to be able to, uh, to do this as, as well. Thank you. Okay, so I'll say what I did over again? Or? <laughs> no, I don't think you need to. But yeah. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. We ready for the? Pete? All right, here we go. In respect of the time, I'm going to try to. I'll be good and stay on some points because there are some points that come through here. But uh, the clicker is going to start uh, start moving uh, for us. Uh, you have a uh, one page. This uh, business survey uh, response uh, thing gives some kind of high level. There's also a link there at the top if you would like to get a hold of the full. Uh, report, uh, and even, we're trying to save some uh, uh, some trees uh, there, but obviously if you uh, request and want uh, a copy printed, we'll make sure that you, you get one. This is actually the second year that we've uh, been able to uh, pull uh, this together. Uh, this, uh, again, is to be able to have, you know, gauge some satisfaction with our business, flesh out some issues, uh, but also have uh, data that um, we can compare time over time. Uh, so um, it's not just uh, anecdotal uh, evidence. We can actually go back and say this is uh, within a plus or minus 5%. This is um, a confidence level. Um, we use uh, uh, ETC Institute, which is the same uh, group that does the citizen satisfaction surveys for the city. So uh, a group that I think we've uh, vetted uh, over time pretty good. Um, again, uh, we had a sample size of 3,000 establishments, close to what uh, last year's uh, were, and um, uh, we had a good turnout in that we had 406 surveys uh, completed, uh, which is a little bit down from uh, last year, but uh, still within our good margin of error. Uh, the location of our uh, respondents were uh, what you would expect, uh, you know, concentration certainly in the uh, core uh, area, uh, but certainly it is a citywide response uh, uh, process there. What's the uh, type of organization? Uh, I think it ended up being pretty similar in uh, uh, scope to what our general business community in, that, that uh, two-thirds of the uh, firms are private firms. Um, and usually in a little smaller uh, trend line in the sense that if you look at this between 2011 and 2012, uh, the number 
of businesses less than 50 employees, uh, 79% was the respondents uh, this year. Uh, last year was a 75. So generally our smaller businesses uh, are the ones that are responding to this, uh, this um, survey, so that some good trend lines. Let's look at some of these uh, things. One of the things we did add uh, and, and, and focused in on a little bit is our workforce uh, issues, a little bit of a different uh, take than what we had last year and some of the different um, uh, questions we hit here. But um, uh, with this one, you can see that um, historically worker productivity uh, is always uh, one of our uh, high suits. Um, and, uh, the availability is uh, sometimes uh, challenging. Um, but if you look at uh, the good and excellent categories, that you're looking at on worker productivity, that's 79%, uh, um, and it kind of goes down to uh, education technical skills of about 40, uh, 52%, if I got my math uh, right uh, there. Um, but I think that's pretty emblematic of some of the other surveys that I've seen over time or the ones that I've conducted in other, other places. When you look at employee recruitment, um, you know, what are the, if you're having problems, what are they related to? Again, I don't think there's necessarily anything of surprise here. The lack of skills, the skills gap, we talk about that from a workforce development conversation and things we need to be uh, working on diligently uh, there. Um, but also then, we also wanted to go into a conversation of, if the organization is considering a relocation, again, this is a subset of a subset, so it's not a, all the folks didn't necessarily, but what are they going to uh, look at to retain uh, them in, in, in the area? What I find fascinating here is how every one of those markers are down from 2011. Uh, so there were fewer people that actually responded to this question than in 2011, which is probably a, a good thing uh, if you're trying to kind of you know, chin scratch on that. Uh, number one uh, dynamic uh, last year and this year is a financial uh, incentive assistance uh, with uh, safety improvements coming in uh, second uh, there, but they're still in that same uh, time uh, or, or a gradient uh, coming uh, down. One of the things that we uh, have here is, you know, what kinds of assistance, and it kind of goes back to that uh, financial, so it's a tag together, what are the different types of information or assistance that folks are looking for? Uh, first being a financial, second being business development planning assistance, and uh, so forth. One of the things I guess I would point uh, out here is uh, we do have a lot of resources to be able to uh, address these uh, needs of these uh, businesses in these uh, areas. So we do have a programming in, in place for that. However, we have an awareness issue that we need to, uh, to work on. Uh, this was a question that we asked whether or not th that these businesses were aware of our local assistance programs. And as you see, 80% of the respondents said no, um, which does um, give everybody some pause that we got some work to do uh, here all across the system. It's not just EDC, but all of our business assistance programs. So we, we need to get better uh, there. But I think one of the um, uh, ways to look at this also from a positive standpoint um, is that of the folks that do use these business assistance tools, a vast majority of them said they were helpful. So when we do create an awareness, we do create an, a, a, an opportunity for these business assistance programs to be utilized, uh, the customer likes it. So I think the bottom line is, is we need to create better connections so that we have more, more customers. Uh, we also have in here the same conversation with our 311 Action uh, Center, uh, similar questions, similar awareness uh, dynamic, but also similar response that when folks do go into that system, uh, they are uh, uh, pleased at a 65% uh, rate uh, there. So that's, again, some positives I think that we can uh, build upon uh, going, going forward. One of the questions that historically we ask is, you know, what's, what, what's your frame of reference going forward? What is your expectation? Uh, are you in a growth cycle or, or so forth? And uh, one of the challenges certainly with the economy is folks are a little bit hesitant still about what is uh, out there. And you'll see that um, in the next three years of your organization considering any of the following, and again, these are by percentages and no plans at the present. So at least that's down from uh, uh, last year. That's 61% in 2011, 46% uh, today. Um, we have then that trade-off, if you will, expand, renovate, in a current facility is up uh, from 25 to 29. Uh, 
not really looking to increase employment, which is uh, not a good thing for those of us that are kind of wanting to get more folks uh, into uh, good jobs. Uh, you know, and certainly have some conversations there, not a huge number, but uh, about some folks that are thinking about relocating or opportunities or options uh, outside the city. Uh, still, um, folks say relocating to Kansas City is still good. Uh, thankfully, there's fewer folks that are planning on um, uh, decreasing employment, but we did have an outlier there that did have a 2% that said that uh, there was a closing possibility. This one, I think, is uh, interesting in that uh, the question is, is a personal residence located in the city of Kansas City, uh, Missouri? Uh, last year, this was uh, basically 50-50-50. Uh, the folks that responded uh, this time, the uh, vast majority of them uh, were not residents of the city. Um, one would say that perhaps that could be a, um, a risk factor uh, for, for us. But I think the next um, slide, I think, is one of the more fascinating slides with this. Those folks that were more on average managers living outside the city have an overall satisfaction level better this year's survey than last year's survey. Again, one of those, those chin, good chin scratchers that uh, basically the, when you say this question, how do you rate Kansas City, Missouri overall as a place to do business, uh, last year that percentage was 55%. This year it's 63%. That's a, that's a track we kind of like to, to see. Um, uh, so that's a good, good trend. Now some of the issues that folks uh, say that they want to, uh, uh, to, to look at when it's important for their current uh, locations, uh, I would mention that if you looked at a national site location uh, rating and ranking, these would be close to in the same category. Uh, that your first is your safety and security, uh, streets, roads, you've got to get your folks in and, and through and protect them, uh, and then your infrastructure uh, conversations kind of come through uh, the, the middle uh, part there as, uh, as well. So quick summary, uh, the positives uh, have gone up. Um, so that's a, a good thing. Uh, last year, the, the, the uh, positive and negatives were three to one. Uh, this year, it's six, six to one. Um, but also then we have some opportunities that we need to uh, work on. Uh, again, safety and security is number one in importance, but as a lower rating uh, that they're being met. Um, uh, the, 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 the one here on the attitude of local government to business doesn't jive with some of the other questions, but it was ninth in importance and 30th of being met, so we need to kind of dig into that. Streets and local roads, again, second in importance and 18th of being met. I know that's been a priority for uh, this, this council, well, all of these, uh, to, uh, to do uh, better at that, and we've got some uh, work to do, and, and certainly on the taxation, there's a little bit of a, a gap, uh, gap there. So that is my as quick as I possibly could without just completely uh, clicking this thing through as I can. Appreciate so much the good team that we have uh, at the EDC, the other allies that we have uh, that have helped us in these conversations and continue to and, and certainly appreciate the support that this body gives, uh, gives to us and to our city. So with that, I would Maybe. open it up. Christy. Real quickly, uh, Christy. Okay. Christy, you want to? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I was talking so fast, I shot right on my. It's all right. Well, thank you all, and I apologize for being a little late this, <clears throat> this afternoon. Um, just to kind of finish up, uh, the Chamber, we, we've been really excited to be part of this process. Um, since its inception in 2010, uh, uh, we figure we've coordinated about 60 visits with uh, KCMOS uh, CEOs, and somewhere, those those companies employ somewhere around 40,000. Many of you, uh, particularly you, uh, Councilwoman Markison, have participated in uh, many of these visits as well as some of the others. And I guess one takeaway that, that I would offer uh, is that we should be doing more of these visits. I think that is clear. Uh, and I, when I mean we, I mean all of our organizations uh, should be doing more of them. There's really value uh, to sitting across from a CEO and his or her leadership team um, and getting to know uh, them by listening to their concerns and their opinions about the city and their opinions about the chamber and how we can all do a better job and um, to listen to their plans for growth or their concerns about growth. So we learn a lot about the company's bottom line and their future plans during these visits. 
And then, but, but we also learn how well we're all doing as organizations in helping these businesses uh, grow and prosper and increase employment, which should be obviously a, a goal, is a goal of all of our organizations. So on a related topic, I just wanted to, I know you all have seen this wonderful document, wanted to remind you all, we are so proud of this, and uh, you all are an extremely important partner in this. Councilman Sharp, <laughs> we had some long meetings uh, four years ago when we first went down this path. I never thought we would get to the point uh, that we have. So four years into this, we have this wonderful consensus agenda, uh, these great logos uh, representing um, six major organizations at the bottom. We have uh, defining guiding principles, which really says there's a lot of content on the back. And um, I will just tell you all, this has been very well received in Jeff City and around the state. Uh, some of our organizations uh, that we participate with around the state are thinking they need to do the same thing because uh, they're hearing about this great uh, consensus agenda that Kansas City has put together. So uh, related to that, we just want to tell you that uh, the Chamber is very proud to be co-hosting the dinner in Jefferson City, the annual dinner this year in Jefferson City with, with the City of Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, that is on Monday, March 4. Uh, I believe it's at the Country Club. And we hope that all of you will be able to make the trip down. It's a real important evening. Sometimes I know it doesn't seem like it. It looks like that, but believe me, you get a chance to see a lot of people. And it's not just legislators. We'll be inviting a lot of statewide officials and, and key staff persons. So uh, I know it's on the mayor's calendar, and uh, we look forward to all the rest of you. And we really appreciate you all and your willingness to uh, co-host this event with us because I think that says something very important that we're all in this together. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any other presentations that you have that you want to make? All right, good. Uh, Councilman Wagner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just thought I would uh, mention, um, just to kind of illustrate this consensus agenda, um, I was uh, in Jefferson City a couple of days ago uh, when the data center's legislation was being heard by the uh, House Economic Development Committee. Uh, I had an opportunity to speak to it, as did Gary Sage. Um, and we had representatives, although they weren't there, they had sent their comments uh, from the Platte County EDC. Uh, so just to illustrate that um, it's not only on paper, uh, but that it does work uh, in Jefferson City, and I was glad to be a part of that. So Wonderful. thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. you. Councilman, Councilwoman Curls? Oh, it's my turn. Uh, yes, I just, um, when you do your, um, and when you have your, uh, I can't think of what to call it, your survey. Survey. I got it. Um, is it is it just is it a verbal thing as well as written or do you leave the survey there and they write their comments and send them in? I think it was all of the above, right? Because I think we, we you, you mail and then there was in order to get the right kind of responses and the right numbers, there were certainly some calls that were made by the institute to make sure we we are able to get good distribution mm -hmm. and good good reliable data uh, over overall. Okay, and, and I did go one time, um, and it was a business downtown, and it was quite interesting. He was uh, starting up, and, and uh, he was quite pleased at that time. I, don't, I hope he's still there. And I also want to, um, uh, you know, make sure we go over the city because some of the 3rd District people are right outside, uh, right outside the downtown area, and I know they would want to be included. Yeah. Well. And one of the things we did in this uh, survey uh, that I believe was, was new uh, this year was um, as they were filling out, we actually asked the question, would you like an EDC representative to call you oh. and visit uh, on an issue? And there were 70 oh. uh, folks that uh, did that, and, and our folks have done the follow-up uh, with that as, as well. So I thought that was, um, again, we, we have their attention and want to make sure that they know there's an opportunity there to talk to somebody. It's not just a survey. Right. Um, um, that, that we wanted to get back and, and visit with uh, with folks. And, yeah, I mean, that's one of the joys of this business is actually going and seeing uh, those dreams in action. Up uh, close and personal, Good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Curls, Councilwoman Markison. Yes, I just want to encourage all my colleagues uh, to 
uh, participate in this. It's it's just such a great experience because, well, I have found, like, like my colleague, that it's usually very positive. I mean, and I think just the fact that you're there visiting them makes it all of a sudden positive you know, at the outset. But you learn a lot about the businesses. And my last one I went to happened to be, like, at State Street. And they were talking about how important the downtown development was to attracting young people. Uh, professionals and keeping them downtown after hours they wanted more food trucks they wanted more activities in the in the day and it's things that we can easily accommodate without any expenditure of, of public funds we just say you know if you're doing food trucks go down by state street and they'll love it they you know they want a dog park in case park and things that make people enjoy our downtown um, and I think that's why uh, there are many of the companies are located in downtown so it's been really the, our investment is definitely paying off, and I think with the streetcar, they're very excited about that possibility for their workers so they can uh, get there without driving a car. More, many of the young people don't want to drive the car down, but um, it, it, it really is informative, and it's a way that you can interact with CEOs and their, and their top staff or, or and many staff and find out things to, for businesses that are expanding, we can provide that information to the EDC so they can follow up. And, you know, it's kind of, it seems like a chance encounter, but it's a really good opportunity to uh, make sure those businesses are happy about our service. And if they're not, we can usually make some tweaks. But that we, if they're planning to expand, we know it up front. We can do some important reconnaissance work. Um, but I, I really encourage you because they're in every, all the businesses are in all of our districts. So it's really a, a good experience. And thank you for uh, the chamber, I think, was the motivator behind this. But we all came together and, and absolutely. Uh, it's been a team effort. So uh, our role is to coordinate the visits. And I have to give uh, Chelsea. Smith, the yes. full uh, credit for that, and it's not easy to coordinate. It's a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're all sizes. Okay, it, you know, it's not just big. It, they're very small mm -hmm. companies and big. Excuse me. That's right. Councilman Sharp. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to say uh, what great partners I think we have in trying to grow the city and bring more jobs and, and businesses to the city. And if I could comment just uh, briefly on the consensus agenda when we – started this about four years ago, and this uh, kind of emanated from the Legislative Committee of the Council. Uh, uh, th there were some groups that, that weren't quite as uh, on board initially as others, and we started with the, the Chamber, the EDC, the Downtown Council, uh, and, and the City, and, and since then the Civic Council and Platte County Economic Development Council have, have added to it. But we were hearing that, uh, you know, we there were different voices all speaking for Kansas City, all with slightly different agendas. And, and by having this joint agenda, we are speaking with one voice. And uh, I'm hopeful this session, with, with some of the changes that we've seen in the General Assembly, that uh, uh, we'll have to have a whole new list, <laughs> or at least uh, a lot more uh, new items uh, next year when we do this, that we'll be able to get some of these passed that we've been working on for so long. But uh, uh, the, these are really great partner organizations we have, and I'm glad we have such a positive re relationship with them. Uh, and if I could just uh, briefly talk about food trucks, uh, uh, it, it's interesting because, as some of you may recall, when we were back in Boston for the National League of Cities meeting, Boston ha has made a conscious decision to really support uh, food trucks and, and to use them as kind of incubators for startup res restaurants, and they offer a lot of incentives, places where they can park, and eased parking restrictions. So that that has been a conscious business decision, an economic development decision of that city. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Sharp. Councilman Wagner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one of the things that that struck me in the survey, and we've talked about this from time to time, is um, the fact that uh, BizCare and our economic development agencies are not known uh, to the to people who want to get into business or are already in business. And, and I guess, if I may put out a challenge there, Mr. Mayor, I think that's that's got to change. And I think we need to, to whether it's working uh, collectively with all of these groups uh, or however it's done, um, we need to put together a plan that markets those agencies effectively and, and, and does so in a repetitive manner. Um, 
just to simply say they're here, that message gets lost. It is only through that frequency and that consistency that these agencies are here and working that that message begins to penetrate. And, and I may ask the, the manager, as I know that we are looking for a new um, communications director, uh, to me, this is probably one of the top things to put on their agenda to do. And I know we've got a number of communications uh, folks and a lot of different agencies, but I guess I'm sitting here and I'm seeing this again, and and and, and that has to be that that has to change. Um, the good work that's being done is being lost on a large percentage of business people, and and I think if uh, as we as we've seen when they are engaged, they're very effective. So to me, this is another opportunity of, of one plus one equaling three or four or five or ten or a hundred. And um, I, I, I think we can't let it slide anymore. Thank you, Councilman Wagner. Councilman Glover? Yes, I, I want to thank you for all that you've done, um, the, the Chamber especially, and of course EDC and all the other partners. Um, the, I'd like to add to what Scott said or emphasize. Um, where I found that people don't know about the good things that the Kansas City can do to help a business is when they're starting a business. And Kansas City has grown dramatically because of entrepreneurs, um, well, Joyce Hall being one, probably the most prominent. Um, and, and I know the um, chamber has... Uh, declare that to be one of its key objectives. I think getting that word out about what we can do to people who are starting a business or have small businesses, frequently small business owners don't know the range of help we can give. So um, I think that that's critically important too. The last thing though I would like you to say, since we're on Channel 2 and many people might be watching this, that own a business or wish to start a business and utilize this program, can you tell people how to contact and engage into this program either through the Internet or to log on or a phone number? What is the most appropriate way for someone wish wishing to, to access these programs to access it? One of the things I think is um, we are in baby step mode. In, in trying to get better and better relative to hitting a lot of different layers of uh, communications channels. Uh, through our Launch KC initiative, launchkc.com, uh, there's a battery of, of uh, there's a, a website. Through that, you can get to the Twitter, the Facebook, and other, uh, other venues there. On the edckc.com, uh, who's actually... Uh, we're, we're in the process of going in transition in the next couple of days to a new uh, new look, touch, and feel there. So hopefully that me that particular spot gets better. But also through there, you can get in touch with us. Uh, can also see what's out there. Can also connect with the other social media networks that uh, that we've been able to uh, develop in the last few months as as well. Again, about trying to connect networks with networks is the only way we're going to do it because none of us are going to have enough marketing dollars solely by ourselves to be able to do that. It's really about, you know, again, working as a, as a team to, uh, to do that and, and make sure that we have robust information uh, out there so folks can see it, touch it, then connect, and, and then we have uh, good uh, and talented staff to actually make those connections and get folks, uh, folks going. We're on a, on a good move, but we, we're continually looking to get better. How, for the KC Best program, what is the key contact where people could access that. Do you mean if, uh, Councilman, do you mean if someone would like to have us come out and do and have a yes. visit? Oh, well, that would be easy. We could call the chamber at, um, and, and more specifically, Chelsea Smith at the chamber, 374-5447. And uh, we're trying to schedule as many of these as, they, as we can, so we'd be happy to talk with them about it. So that's what they need to do. Yeah. And the other thing that we're trying to do with the EDC staff is being into the community so that they that these folks are actually at meetings with businesses and various uh, other organizations community organizations business organizations so they kind of float in that kind of connection so we can get that again that network to 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 connect um, holistically 
Thank you. Anyone else? No? Well, I want to thank you all. Uh, I'm sorry, Ed. I thought you were going to come back to me like you usually do. Oh. I, I am, but oh. I just want to. <laughs> 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 Was you premature? <laughs> kind of anxious here. Um, I, I wanted to personally thank you all. I've gone on a number of the visits, and Tom, I want to thank you for what you've done. You're always the interface that I see at EDC executive committee meetings talking. And Pete, I know what you're trying to do at EDC. Christy, you and the chamber are at the forefront. And Bill, thank you very much for everything that you're doing to support uh, the EDC, the chamber, and, uh, and uh, Casey Best. Now, Ed, if you want to wrap up. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mayor, I think what you, what you see here is, is, is the, the new look of the, the Casey EDC, the emphasis on on partnerships and business retention and uh, uh, statistical-based uh, uh, results. Um, I thought one interesting takeaway from the surveys were, were um, the rankings paralleled in so much what, what we're working on in advanced KC and the, the strategies there, which indicate I think we're right on target in, in terms of what the future of the uh, EDC will look like. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here. Oh. Appreciate it. Oh, and just one other thing. You, you might get the word out to banks, uh, business loan officers. Uh, if they have the information at their fingertips, they may be hearing from some of those banks, and it would be a good idea for them to be able to say, we may not be able to help you. Call these guys. Yep, that's a great idea. Thank you. Sure. All right, next item of business is discussion of ordinances, resolutions, and communications on today's docket or for floor introduction. Councilman Sharp. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, a, an ordinance uh, that was sponsored by Councilman Wagner and I uh, will be uh, on the docket uh, today. It came out of the Public Safety Committee and was advanced uh, unanimously from our committee. And uh, this deals with uh, strengthening our ability to enforce uh, uh, our ordinances and state laws prohibiting the sale of tobacco products to children. And uh, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, from the testimony that, that we received in committee and, and from, the, uh, from uh, other meetings that, that we've had little or no enforcement uh, mm -hmm. of our ordinances or of state laws prohibiting the sale of tobacco products to children. And this has been a longstanding uh, concern of many people on the council. We, we all uh, remember the leadership of our former colleague, uh, Councilwoman Kathy Jolly, on this. But it's also been a longstanding concern of our health department, of public health advocates, and community groups that are working to prevent children from becoming addicted to nicotine or other drugs, such as the Hickman Mills uh, Prevention Coalition. And uh, we had quite a bit of testimony about this uh, in the Gateway Crimes uh, Task Force that, that I serve on and the Councilman Wagner uh, chairs. And we had heard this, but we really didn't have good definitive data on, on just how bad the problem was. So uh, regulated industries actually recruited some youth volunteers to, to try to make underage buys of tobacco products, just like they do and have been doing for some time on, on the sale of alcoholic beverages. And that is, the results of that are, ha, were distributed to you uh, earlier today. But they made basically uh, 100 different attempted buys. It was actually 99. And uh, they made them in all, in all areas of the city. And most of, most of the buys were at uh, gas stations and convenience stores. And you see in the chart on the second page of this uh, the number of times they attempted to buy uh, cigarettes and the number of times they were allowed to buy cigarettes. And as you can tell, 56.5% uh, uh, of the time they were able to, to uh, buy cigarettes illegally. And uh, for convenience stores, they were able to buy them 60% of the time. For gas stations, almost 63% of the time. And even higher percentages in, in some uh, uh, other types of, of venues. It was interesting uh, that uh, Mr. Majors reported to us in many cases they, they didn't even ask for IDs, and in some cases they asked for IDs, saw they weren't old enough, but said, well, we'll, you know, we'll sell them to you anyway as long as we don't get in any trouble for it. Um, they didn't this time. But uh, if you flip back a couple of more pages, you'll see the biggest uh, percentages uh, 
where, where they most frequently sold to underage kids uh, were in the east area, which is basically the part of the city east of Prospect, and in North Kansas City. So it was pretty clear from this that, that we, uh, we do have a problem on this, and it's a problem that affects uh, the health of our, our most precious assets, our children. So uh, we introduced an ordinance that, that came out of the Public Safety Committee unanimously, and it gives us a way to enforce our ordinances and state law against the, under, the sale of tobacco products to, to underage kids. And the probably the biggest or, or the most, uh, uh, I think the most effective provision of this is a new section 2019 that authorizes the manager of regulated industries to assist with enforcement because uh, they have good experience in doing this on, on the sale of, of alcohol to kids, and the, the Commissioner of Revenue simply didn't have the staff to, to do these kind of inspections. And we put in there that the uh, manager of regulated industries would also have the ability to conduct informal dispositions of contested cases because on the sale, on violations of our ordinances, uh, regarding the sale of alcoholic beverages, uh, there's hardly ever a case where they go to an actual hearing. I think we were told that in the last three and a half years there have only been two hearings in that whole time, but most of the time uh, uh, these things are worked out through negotiation. Uh, the, propriet the proprietor of the business in question that has violated the law will have to stipulate that yes, they did it, and then there's agreed upon an agreed upon penalty, usually a suspension of sales for a certain period of time or paying the cost of the enforcement effort. Uh, but there, in almost uh, all these cases, uh, they are worked out informally like that, and, and they seem to have really uh, had a good outcome on reducing the sale of alcoholic beverages uh, to underage kids because whenever they – they enter into one of these agreements, then the place is reinspected to, to see, to make sure that they are following the law. So uh, uh, this will be before us this afternoon, and we think it will uh, allow us to uh, protect more of our children from becoming addicted uh, to tobacco products. And uh, we, we uh, just want uh, these businesses to follow the law and to take it seriously, and, and I think this will allow them to do it. And I'm sure Councilman Wagner... Uh, would like to make some some comments on it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councilman Sharp. Councilman Wagner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think uh, you know John has a habit of giving it all out there, and then I have very little to say. But uh, <laughs> I would never do that. So be it. No, um, the um, I think the only other thing I would add, Mr. Mayor, is that what brought us to this was the activity of our uh, of our Gateway Crimes Task Force trying to deal. Uh, originally, in this case, uh, some of the synthetic drug issues that are out there, um, many times those, th those uh, sorts of drugs are available um, in convenience stores, uh, small stores um, that sometimes put it, you know, put it behind the cabinet or behind the, uh, the, the counter um, and, you know, just to ask for it uh, by name or you kind of give a wink and, and, you, and you can get that product. Um, the bonus with this, uh, and Councilman Sharp uh, uh, went through it very well is that not only does this become a mechanism for us to deal with uh, those stores that may be selling that sort of material that may not be selling uh, alcohol, but it obviously gets us to uh, an another issue that is just as big, just as dangerous, and that is selling to, to uh, underage individuals. The, the, the reality is that this used to be a state job. And they had, the state would have 22 inspectors that would go and, and see if they're selling to minors. That 22, after a few years, is now down to two. And there is absolutely, well, it may be one unless you know something more than I do. But, but the reality is that the state is not doing it. Uh, the reality is that the problem continues. And the unfortunate reality is, is that we, as the city, where the rubber meets the road, is having to deal with it. Um, what we've laid out here, I think, is a great process that's consistent uh, with the effective process that regulated industries currently has for alcoholic beverages. Uh, we expect the same kind of efficacy that we have um, in that area. So um, hopefully, um, you know, unless there are any questions here, um, uh, we ask for your support later today. And I should, also say, uh, I should also thank uh, Councilwoman Markison uh, as we've had conversations on this too. 
obviously th this function rested in uh, the revenue division for years and years and years. Um, with what we're doing, we still take into account um, how they license cigarette selling in the city, but I think now have a very good enforcement provision to allow us to move forward and, and deal with some of the issues that we're experiencing in, in our neighborhood. So I, I would be remiss if I did not um, provide a few accolades across the room. Thank, Thank you, you Councilman Wagner. Councilwoman Curls. Yes, I just wondered how, how do they determine um, female you know, gender as to who's buying that's done at birth. Those were what? <laughs> well, gender and race. I mean, who's those were the testers. Information? Those were the testers. That's just the oh, these gender are just and ethnicity of the testers. Okay, because I thought you meant they were saying, oh, "Here's a woman, and here's an African." You know, that's what I thought. I thought, they, "Who's doing that?" They, they okay. wanted to see if they were more inclined to to violate the law dealing with one gender or another, <laughs> or based on ethnicity. And these people were from the city. Volunteers. Volunteers. Mm -hmm. Student volunteers. Okay. Thank you. And Councilman Ford. Mayor, on the uh, docket today under non-committee resolution. Hold on just a second. So everybody finished commenting on this particular issue? Okay. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt you, Councilman Ford. Just wanted to make sure we were clear of one subject. Go ahead, sir. Uh, under uh, non-committee resolutions, uh, uh, you have a resolution to appoint the successor directors to the Red Bridge Community Improvement District. That's this, correct. This is a change of procedure and how we've been handling this issue under CIDs. Uh, uh, all CIDs that are communicated to the clerk are now being sent to planning and zoning which gives our committee and our staff an opportunity to take a closer look. And under state statute, it's, it's, it's by default, if the, uh, the, uh, if the mayor doesn't appoint the successor directors, then they're up, uh, automatically appointed by default. And we thought it would be better to be more proactive and, and put stamp of approval on it. So that's, that's why we're seeing that for the first time. Thank you, sir. That's, that's correct. And I'm glad that you picked that up. I was, uh, is going to is there any discussion on that issue none uh, there's another there's an ordinance and it's not quite the same but along similar lines it merely establishes the uh, ethnic enrichment uh, commission all 80 or so of them um, after much negotiation um, after much negotiation, we were finally able to get everything done so that we were able to establish them in the same way and populate this commission as in the same way as we populated the others. Um, we simply were unwilling to say, just because you've been there and done that, we'll give you a pass. We had some negotiation to do, and I'm glad that we were able to come to resolution. It's done. It's over. Uh, so that's what that ordinance is about. Any discussion on that issue? Are there any other ordinances or uh, resolutions on today's docket that need to be discussed? Hearing none, how about items to be placed on future business session agendas? Uh, Councilman Ford. There was a, a reference in, in the editorial uh, page this, this morning on uh, Mid-America Regional Council's projections of population growth in the region. Yes, sir. And I thought that would be a fascinating uh, topic uh, to be presented here at a business session. Okay. All right. Um, Councilman Sharp. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, the Health Care Trust Board has uh, concluded negotiations with our, our insurance carriers for our employee uh, health insurance, and uh, I think we've got some very great news to uh, present to the Council, so uh, when uh, we'd be able to put that on, uh, I think this would be uh, something that we'd all be interested in, our employees would be interested in, and, and uh, we'd like that opportunity as soon as we can, sir. Thank you, Councilman Sharp. Are there any other items that anyone wants, uh, Councilwoman Markison? Well, we do have, just reminding people, we do have in business session uh, for two weeks, the department directors are coming to, to talk about the budget. So there are going to be extended time for those uh, sessions. They're going to start at noon. We're going to start having lunch at 1130. When does this start? Next week. Next week. So you, you should have gotten a you should have gotten it in the um, on your email. I think Joyce sent those out, and um, so we'll have from twelve twelve o'clock to to three uh, for next week, and then in two weeks. So you'll hear from all the departments. So if you want to, you know, kind of peruse through the web and see if there are any questions you have of the department directors. So we have our budget hearing 
starting Friday, tomorrow. Not Friday, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Saturday 9 Saturday. to 11 at the Mohart Center. Okay. Anyone else? Anything else? Councilman Ford. In, in planning and zoning yesterday, uh, we talked about uh, after the next uh, hearing and uh, after the federal judge on the Beacon Hill project, we thought it would be good for uh, a review of where we are in the, the entire project. We, we've been getting it piecemeal, both in committee and council. Good news on the grocery store, good news on the student housing, good news on the colonnade. But in terms of how they work together, we, we thought uh, since the city has made a major investment in those areas, that would be nice to have. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Ford. Anybody else? Any other subjects? Hearing no other subjects, then uh, is there a motion to go into closed session? Mr. Mayor, I move we go into closed session to address legal matters pursuant to 610.021, parentheses 1, of, uh, revised statute of Missouri, personal matters pursuant to 610.021, parentheses 3, um, of the revised statute of Missouri and bids and proposals pursuant to 610.021 parentheses 12. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we go into closed session to address legal matters pursuant to 610.021 paren 1 and personnel matters pursuant to 610.021 paren 3 and bids and proposals pursuant to 610.021 paren 12. Is there any further discussion? Hearing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Wagner? Aye. Davis? Aye. Ford? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Curls? Aye. Reed? Aye. Serco? Aye. Glover? Aye. Markison? Aye. Brooks? Taylor? Aye. Sharp? Aye. James? Aye. 12 eyes. We're in closed session.